For the very first time, it's time to take out on the road the Ibusco 3.0. We are in the Czech Republic. The event is Eurobus Test 2024, and for the first time, we are going to drive the Ibusco 3.0 articulated. We have heard about this bus, and it's sold many, many, many units, but for the first time, we are looking at it, we are feeling it, and of course, we are driving it. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. We will show you some beautiful photos of the bus, even on our social medias. board in the Ebusco 3.0 18 meter articulated bus and this is the first time I'm sitting behind the steering wheel in an Ebusco 3.0. So here we have what I call a quite standard dashboard but something I could see very early that it's not so much to adjust. You can put it all the way to the floor more or less but I, I didn't feel that I have all this possibilities that I wish for and the rest is quite standard you have some buttons on the steering wheel you have the buttons for the lights on the left side on the right side you have the door buttons you also have some adjustments for the height and lowering the bus I put the bus in drive and release the handbrake that is electric but it's not automatic and then we are driving On the Ebusco 3.0 you have all the batteries in the floor. It's 383 kilowatt hour and it gives you approximately 600 kilometers range in one charging. Most of the batteries is in the first part of the bus and the rest is in the second part after articulated part. This is something more or less unique for maybe a couple of years ago it was quite strange to think about having the batteries in the floor because normally the battery pack is quite big. On this one they have special battery packs that is very thin and fits under the floor and the, in the whole bus without making the floor higher. You can charge this in uh, several options. You can fast charge it or slow charge it. If you charge it on 150 kilowatt charger it takes approximately two and a half hour to full charge the bus. It means that you can overnight charge them and you can use it for the whole day operation. One of the things that I find really unique on this bus is that you have the drive axle in the middle. This is what we can call a Scandinavian uh, dream or that old articulated buses again could have the drive axle in the middle. On this one you have it and you can choose for a single tire, super single tire or you can also have twin tires if you want. And the drive axle is also with the electric engines in the hub instead of a central engine. It means that you don't need an engine box or something like that and you also have the middle aisle quite wide. You have 900 millimeters in all the three wheelhouses in the bus. So it means you have a total flat floor all the way from the front door to the rear door. You can also choose to have the entrance for the disabled people in the front or in the middle. Now I have been driving for a couple of kilometers and I starting to get what we can call a little bit used to the mirrors. I'm not a big fan of the digital mirror. Uh, it's like an up and down for me. Sometimes I feel comfortable and sometimes not. On this one, it's a little bit strange because when I turn the wheels, I'm not sure where I have the end of the bus because the marks on the mirrors is not where the bus ends. It's just in the middle of the bus. So I cannot trust the mirror 100%. It's only when I have a straight line that all the bus is in the straight direction then i can more or less know where i have the middle axle and rear axle and the end of the bus i like the classic mirrors where i have the feeling of the depth of the bus this is much better than the digital mirrors but the quality gets better from each bus and each generation that i test 
Earlier today I had a chance to be a passenger sitting all the way back in this bus. This is an articulated bus, you know when you get all the way back in the bus you have a different feeling of the suspension than you have in a solo bus or in the front part of the bus. But still I feel the suspension was a little bit too hard for me. Maybe it's because the weight on this bus is under 15 ton so it's very light body. So the suspension is maybe made for a more heavy bus with all the passenger inside so I, I didn't compare it to that but still I, I have a feeling that the suspension could be a little bit more softer or electronic adjustment so when you have a heavy bus it's harder and we have a less passenger it's softer I don't know if this is possible but here behind the steering wheel I have a good view straight forward but as soon as I move my head and my eyes to the left or the right I have a very big A-pillar and a side window that I don't understand how they can make it like this. I wish everyone could learn after telling them so many times over so many years, move the window as low as possible so you have the chance to see if there are kids in the corner. The side window is electric. You have the digital mirror screens just above your head in the front. On the right side it's not in the middle, it's a little bit to the right in the front window. The front window on this one is completely heated so you have all the way down uh, special equipment that I would say could be good for us in the Nordic areas. It's a little bit strange in the beginning but you get used to it because your eyes want to focus on the wiring in the window but after a couple of kilometers you get used to move your focus point longer into the front. In this bus you have 51 seats and only 49 standing passengers. The reason is that we have 275 tires on this one. So it's a city tire and you get less capacity because of that. But you can choose twin tires or super single tires that gives you more capacity of passengers. You can see the seats in this bus is a plastic seat with a little bit foaming. It's the standard seat you see all over Europe. Now we are standing where you can have the wheelchair. You also have some extra seats if you want. Now I'm standing where you have the drive line, And this is not all the way back in the articulated bus. It's in the middle. And I'm so happy about this because this is something I have been asking for for the last 10, 15 years. This is the way they build articulated buses in the 70s and 80s and then in the 90s and 2000s they move the engine and the axles all the way back and then you get a pusher. And in the Scandinavian the pusher is not working well in slippery surfaces. You can also get it with a 4x4 if you want. Sorry for bursting into your film Tom, but I just have to say, I just discovered one thing you didn't mention and we didn't know. Look, it's even light in the articulated part. That's a very fun, cool thing. But I have to say, when you are driving in full speed, it's crazy amount of sound in this bus. Back to you, Tom. I also have to mention the, the, the lights in the roof. That was a little bit special for me because I was looking into a brand new bus on the market and I was expecting more modern lightning as I have seen in so many other cities. and now you can feel the suspension. I was expecting that it was more in the center of the roof, but it's all the way out on the side of the roof, just above the window. Inside of this bus, it looks a little bit boring. In the beginning, it was only the lights on the side I could see, but there is a secret button in the front. You can choose in all the colors of the rainbow if you want in the roof. When I first saw this bus, that's many years ago now, I was in a launch uh, at a factory, I believe it's maybe five, four or five years ago, and I was surprised about the front design at, at first. The E in the logo is very big and the design looks very futuristic. For me it was, yes, this is a modern bus. I like the design also on the side of the bus, on the roof of the bus. And then I went into the details and I could see even the, because of the batteries is in the floor, it's quite low because it's less than 3.2 meters. It's a good solution for places where you have a small bridge and so on and it also makes the bus more stable to drive because you don't have the movement from side to side when you get into the when you get into the curves but again you can hear the suspension now we are driving on a really bad whoa <laughs> 
Now we are driving on really bad roads, but still, everything's making noise. So when you order the bus, you have a lot of options when it comes to the charging system. You have the CCS2 plug that you can choose, and you can also have the pantograph on the roof, or you can have the rails. So it's up to you what you choose or what your bus depot is prepared for. If I want to wrap it up, I will say that I like to drive the bus, I like the feeling of the acceleration and, uh, and, and recuperation of the energy, but the chassis is too stiff for me. The driver area is very small and the steering wheel is so old. You can call it a multifunctional steering wheel, but for me you can skip this, you can have it more clean and you should have a better steering wheel to hold on for you driving this for maybe 12 hours a day. You have a digital display on this one and to be honest this is maybe one of the best I have seen because you only get the information you need. Everything else that that is behind it you never need and you never have to check it. Let the workshop do that. You only need to know your speed and how much battery you have left. So remember this for the next time you are thinking about making a bus make it like this one and when you move backwards in the bus i think it's a little bit too gray too dark too old-fashioned way you can make this bus more modern you could easily make this bus more welcoming and nice for the passenger to stay in thank you so much for watching the video here today and if you like what you see click down here the button is called subscribe and then you will see all the future videos from us here in Bus Magazine. Until next time, drive safely and have a great day.